So uh, now we're going to put uh, these ideas kind of together and start looking at graphs a little bit. All right, because this is one of the things that you have to do a lot in this unit is be able to interpret a graph uh, along with transverse or uh, longitudinal waves. All right. Now, the first thing I want you to see is this one over here on the left, which is a transverse wave, right? We can see that the particles are moving along the wave. The wave, we don't know which way the wave is moving, but we'll just say it's moving to the right right now, which means that this particle, as the wave moves a little bit to the right, right, because this is where it will be in the next instant, right? So it's moving a little bit, okay? The red one is going to move down, the green one's going to move up, the blue one's going to be move, move up. So the particles are moving up and down, right? The wave, yes, is moving to the right, and as I draw that wave, you can see the wave that I just drew moving a little bit to the right. That's usually the easiest way to figure out what direction the particles are moving. Okay, so I moved it just a little bit over, okay? So I got the wave over here, just a little bit to the right, okay, and you can see that this blue particle is gonna have to move up, the green particle is gonna have to move up, the red particle is gonna have to move down. Okay, so you can see which direction the particles are moving. Now, at this point in time, okay, it's important to notice that this is the equilibrium right here, going through the middle, right? So right now, the red point is right at equilibrium. It's right at zero. The green point is right at equilibrium. It's at zero. Now, this purple point right here, the blue point, right? That blue point is below the line. And so the blue point has to have a negative displacement. It's going to be down below. All right. And so this is all stuff that we need in order to be able to uh, in, kind of interpret the graph. Now, usually the transverse waves are the easiest ones to, to determine because the graph is moving up and down and the particles are moving up and down. Okay. Now, the next one is the longitudinal wave and the longitudinal over here The longitudinal wave is going to be a little bit more difficult because in longitudinal we understand that if the wave is moving to the right, that the particles are moving to the right and the left, not up and down. And yet the graph that we're going to draw is still going to look like a transverse wave. It's still going to look like it's moving up and down. But let me show you, right? So this upper line right here is where the particles in the medium would usually be. They would be evenly spaced out, right? Now, with the movement, right, at this point in time, you can see that the particle that's right here that should be right here in the middle, this gray one, that has a negative displacement, which is why it's been moved over to the left a little bit, right? This one right here, this black one right here, this one has a positive displacement because it's moved to the right. It should be in this spot right here, but it's moved over to the right, okay? And so you can kind of see how the particles have moved, right? This one's moved over to the left. This one's moved over to the right. The ones on the dotted line that are in the equilibrium positions, those haven't moved. They're still in the same place. Now, what you can see is that I have some places, and I, I, I should have showed this in the, in the last video with the, the sound wave, the longitudinal wave, but in some places I have more particles than usual. This is called a compression. Okay, that's usually the wave front that we talk about when we're talking about a, a wave moving along, kind of like the crest, right? That's, that's our compression there, okay? Um, in some places, like this one right here, um, there are less particles than usual, okay? That's called a rarefaction, all right? And the rarefaction means that there's more space than usual, Right, And that's because of the movement of the particles. But what I need you to recognize is that in the graph, it looks like it has moved down, but it hasn't. The graph is representing displacement. And negative displacement for longitudinal means to the left. And so that's why this guy is to the left. And so that's an important idea is that we're able to make the connection between the up and down of the graph, of this displacement graph, versus the left and right motion of the longitudinal graph, all right? And so hopefully you're being able to see some of these details and you'll be able to interpret that as we move along. Notice that here where the slope is negative, that is where we get the compression, okay? Notice here 
where the slope is positive, that's where the rarefaction occurs. That'll be an important idea later on. And usually you can kind of figure it out because you know this is moved to the right, this is moved to the left, therefore they must have kind of squeezed in together, so that's your compression. But if it's something that you feel is worth memorizing, it may, it may be worth memorizing there, all right? Okay, uh, this is a water wave. What do you think a water wave is? Transverse or longitudinal? We've actually talked about this a little bit, but I want you to see it. Here we go. So there you go. Can you see that yellow point? It's definitely going up and down, right? But it's also moving left and right, okay? The one deeper is also doing the same thing, right? It's definitely going up and down. It's definitely going left and right. Really, they're both kind of circular motions, right? And not a perfect circle either, right? It's just kind of this circular motion that it's moving through. Things up at the top move more, things at the bottom move less. That's why you have the wave up at the top. But it is a combination of a longitudinal wave, which is the left and right, and a transverse wave, which is up and down, because you do see the wave moving here to the right. So some of the motion is parallel, some is perpendicular. So it's actually a combination. Even though it looks like a transverse wave, it's actually not. Okay. Again, notice that the particles of the water stay where they are. I mean, they're kind of vibrating in place or going in circles, but in general, they actually stay where they are. It doesn't make any sense for all of this water to move that way. That means the whole ocean would be going up on your beach, which we know doesn't happen, right? The water has to more or less stay where it is. It has to have this motion generally where it's staying in the same location, same area, okay? That is the simplification, but close enough. And deep water, this is more or less what it would look like. When you get to shallow water, yeah, it's going to look a little bit different. We'll, we'll talk about that later. All right, last video, last, last slide of this video is the electromagnetic spectrum. There's a couple of things that I need you to be able to get from this, okay? One is looking at these. You've got radio waves. TV rays, don't worry too much about. TV rays are, are really just somewhere in between radio microwaves. They, they put it here because they don't want a big space here in the middle um, you've got microwaves, you've got infrared waves, which is usually heat, right? We usually see infrared waves as heat. You've got your visible light. Sorry, it's not very clear. It's missing one right here, which is right above the visible light, which is ultraviolet, right? Like the waves, uh, the, the damaging ones from the sun. The reason why they're damaging is because they're a higher frequency, higher frequency. Remember we talked about that frequency is proportional to energy. So higher frequency means higher energy. So that's why the ultraviolet rays from the sun are more dangerous than the visible light from the sun. They're all from the sun, and they're all exactly the same thing. They're all part of this electromagnetic spectrum. In fact, we talked about Wien's Law, right? We talked about Wien's Law and how Wien's Law means that you have a specific wavelength that is the most common wavelength for a specific temperature, right? Where we had wavelength here and... Uh, um, and the, the intensity here, right? And so for a specific temperature, we had a wavelength that was the most common, but that for any given temperature of a black body, it's letting out all these different wavelengths. It's not just the one wavelength that we see. It's letting out a whole bunch of different wavelengths. And the sun is doing that. The sun is letting out visible light, but it's also letting out ultraviolet light. It's also letting out infrared light. In fact, I was at the, uh, I'll, I'll try to send out a picture in the teams, but I was at the planetarium over the, uh, last week, and I saw a picture of, um, I'll, I'll have to, to go look it up, but I, don't, I, I can't remember if it was the sun or if it was uh, the center of a, a galaxy, and it was taken with different filters that only showed specific types of light, right? It only showed the visible light, or it only showed the infrared light, or it only showed the ultraviolet light, right? And so it was really interesting to see the different types of light that were being sent out. Even though visibly all we can see is that visible light, all those other types of waves, all of these things, the x-rays, the gamma rays, all of these are the same type of wave. The only difference is that some of them have longer wavelengths than others. Some of them have higher frequencies, but it's the exact type of wave. That type of wave we'll talk about a little bit more in detail later, but right now I just, I, I need you to understand that these are all the same thing. It's an electromagnetic magnet, magnetic wave, or in other words, it's all light. They're all light waves. They're just different types of light, okay? Which means, of course, that they all travel 
the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. They're all exactly the same, moving exactly the same through a vacuum. Okay, this is one of the few types of waves that doesn't require a medium. You don't need air, you don't need a liquid, you don't need a solid. It can move through nothing because it's an electromagnetic wave and it's electric and magnetic fields that are moving through space. Okay, um, so uh, that's one of the big ideas from the electromagnetic spectrum I need you to get is that idea of everything here is... Um, is the same thing, right? Just some are higher frequencies. The next thing I need you to get is within the visible light, you've probably heard this before, but you've got Roy, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which is kind of a bluish purple, and then violet. Roy G. Biv is the order of colors from the lowest frequency. So this is low frequency, frequency low, up to the highest frequency. Okay, and so you've got Roy G. Biv. You need to know that because you need to know the order of the colors from the low frequency to the high frequency. Now I want you to notice this. You now have ultraviolet. Ultraviolet means ultra higher than violet. So that means ultraviolet is right above the high frequency. That's one way to remember that purple or violet actually has the highest frequency. Okay, you also have infrared, infrared meaning below the red. And so that's the light that's just below the red here. Okay, and so just below the red is infrared. That'll be a frequency below the red. So in addition to the colors, Roy G. Biv, in their order, you do need to know more or less these different types of electromagnetic waves. Now, the mnemonic that I used when I was in high school and when I was in university and, and even now I know it's a little bit weird but it was R Miv Ux Juk R Miv Ux Juk and I know it's a weird word but sometimes weird makes it easier to remember tell yourself R Miv Ux Juk R Miv Ux Juk R Miv Ux Juk Lily say R Miv Ux Juk see even my six year old can say it you learn that word and you will know that it's from low to high frequency, just like Roy G. Biv was from low to high. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, and the C is cosmic rays. Depending on your textbook, depending on your course, depending on your teacher, you may or may not need to know cosmic rays. Generally speaking, um, IB texts don't include it. Okay, I mention it because you may hear about it later and I don't want you to freak out. Mr. Bowden lied to me, there's another type of wave. No, actually, it's still an electromagnetic wave. It's just cosmic rays are very high frequency gamma waves. Okay, so it ne you need to make sure that at least you've heard it before. But for IB, you really just need the R M I V U X G or R M V X G. Okay. So uh, that's the end of this. That's what you need to know about the electromagnetic spectrum. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. One last thing. Remember, we've actually seen this before. The V equals frequency times wavelength. Okay. This is velocity of a wave is equal to its frequency times its wavelength. Velocity is the speed. Lambda is the wavelength in meters. And frequency is hertz or per second. Okay. Put all this together. And uh, remember, for an electromagnetic wave, the speed is, all, at least in a vacuum, the speed is always the speed of light, which means that this V here can be replaced with a C, the speed of light. This is a very common type of question where they may say that an X-ray has a frequency of da 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 what is its wavelength? You have to make the connection that, oh, I've got the frequency. I know that the speed is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and that then allows me to get the wavelength. Okay, or whatever else. But just know that for an electromagnetic wave, velocity or C is always C, 3.3 times 10 to the eighth. And that is a constant which is in the front of your formula packet. It's with those uh, constants there. All right, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped maybe filled in some gaps or maybe uh, remind you of a couple of, or at least highlighted the things that are gonna be important as we go forward. All right, see you later.